Welcome to the SAU Home Show today. I'm your host, Teresa Engelbauer. And I'm Ed Terrell. Today we have Robin Stevens talking to Paul Talley about childproofing your home and Chef Gary Brown from Dallas, Texas on how to kick donuts. We'll also show you how you can work those calories off with a training instructor, Amanda Anderson. And also she'll be around to show you the latest fashion in aerobics. We'll be back after these commercial messages. We're here today with Chef Gary Brown from Dallas, Texas, and he's in charge of the Colonial Factory for making donuts. Gary, what made you get into making donuts? Well, while I was attending college at Southern Arkansas University, in my spare time, I was kind of bored. And I was, um, I didn't know what I was going to do. I thought, well, you know, I'll, I'll try something different. So I'd, I'd seen a commercial about donuts, and I thought, well, they look good. Let me try to make something of them. So I thought that you get biscuits out of the thing right here. So I tried, I bought some of the canned biscuits that you buy at your local grocery store, and I thought, well, if I poke a hole in them, and uh, you do it like this. You poke, I poked a hole in it like this. And then I got some hot grease and a fry daddy, which you can use any kind of grease, like vegetable oil or corn oil or anything. And you take your fry daddy and you drop it off in here in the hot grease, just like so. Make sure it doesn't burn you. And you listen to it, it's going to sizzle. And you wait till it turns a golden brown. And you take like a fork or a spatula or something. And you're gonna kind of, I like to play with it. Kinda. What temperature is the grease supposed to be? The grease usually gets to about 350, but you want to make sure the grease is very hot. It, it can get hotter because if you put it in cold grease, it's gonna soak up and it's gonna taste like real, like grease. I mean, it's gonna, you're gonna have a, it's gonna be sour, like kind of mushy taste to it. But you wait until it turns a golden brown. You keep flipping it over. How long does it take to cook? It takes about a minute. It takes about a minute. What level should the grease be? In your fried eddy, there's a level, and uh, it didn't need to be lower than that level that's in there. Okay. But then you take it out and you let it drain for a while. And you put it into a pan of powdered sugar. Sometimes you can, I also use cinnamon, that's real good, and you can use like chocolate or anything, but you cover up the donut and you roll it around. Or you can also take like a, like a Ziploc bag and do like shake and bake. You know, you can stick the donut in there and shake it. But you roll it around for a while. You let it cool off, and you take it and you sit it over in some place and just let it sit and let it cool for a while before you eat it or you're going to burn yourself. Would you like to try one? Yes, please. There you go. Very delicious. Stay tuned. Coming up next is fashion. Hi. I'm here with Amanda Anderson, aerobics instructor from Total Fitness. Uh, what are the latest hot items on the market for fashion in aerobics these days? Well, the main thing is to be conservative and wear cotton. The most, most of the time people wear things that are comfortable to them. And I've brought some aerobics assistants today to demonstrate what types of fashions are good for aerobics. Well, why don't you introduce our first uh, fashion model here? Okay, first we have Kelly. Kelly is wearing the tight black shorts, the cotton shorts. Also, that is, that is good for aerobics. That's what most of the aerobics people wear. Also, she's wearing the yellow spandex tight tank top. Thank you, Kelly. Uh, as you were telling me previously there, um, it's also very good to absorb the sweat, isn't it? Right, very much so. Right. Um, next we have is Gary. Gary is wearing the uh, spandex bicycle shorts with the black loose shorts over it, which that is good. Loose clothing is not good to wear, but with the way he has it, it's fine. Also, he has the black tank top, which what are, is what most men wear in aerobics. I like that watch clashes, don't you? The watch? Well, it's not really good to wear jewelry in aerobics. They'll have a clock up on the wall for you if you're worried about the time. All right. Okay, uh, why, don't you, you, why don't you bring on our next fashion one. Okay, model. next is Marsha. Marsha is wearing the red cotton shorts with a white t-shirt. And also, I would like to bring up her shoes. She's wearing the quarter top shoes and those are good for aerobics. The um, just normal flat shoes with no arch aren't good for aerobics. You want to wear high tops or quarter top shoes that support your ankles. 
Mm -hmm. That's also very important for jogging, isn't it? Very much so. Um, well, we'll be back later on with uh, a little bit of on the on the spot training in aerobics. Welcome to another segment of Home Improvement Tips. This week we've been doing a whole segment of how to childproof your home. Yesterday we learned how to childproof electrical outlets and today we're going to learn how to childproof your cabinets. We're here today with Paul Talley, a carpenter from San Antonio, Texas. Paul? Thanks Robin. Yes, today I'm going to show you how to install a child safety lock on your cabinets. This is very important for those couples who are thinking about having their first child or for couples who have a child that's entering toddlerhood and likes to get into things, climb on things, open things he shouldn't, and stuff like that. The idea is real simple. You can get these safety locks at your local hardware store or retail store, and they're real simple to install. If you'll step over here, I'll show you what I've done. The hardware involved here is just a simple plastic lock. It's about an inch and a half long and a catch that you install on the cabinet jam. The lock goes on the door itself and just a couple of screws. Okay, let me show you what I've done here with my simulated cabinet. I've installed the catch. It goes an inch from the jam, right over here, flush with the outside of the cabinet, screwed right up there tight with the grooves facing to the back, and the lock directly at the top of the cabinet, an inch over, and screwed right up tight there. So when you shut the cabinet door, this lock will catch right in there, and the child can't open it and can't get in and, you know, get into things he shouldn't. And when you want to open it up, you just press this down and it opens right back up like that. It's real effective. It works real well. You know, if you have chemicals, disinfectants, Drano, something like that, that, you know, a child shouldn't be getting into, it could hurt himself. It's a real good idea and it works real well. Like I said, it's cheap. You can get them at any hardware store. All you need to install it is a screwdriver and have a little bit of time and it could save you from a, a potentially dangerous situation and it's real effective. Thanks, Paul. This has been Robin Stevens reporting for Home the Home Show. Now we have Amanda Anderson with her aerobic training crew. Can you uh, introduce your crew? Okay, our crew we have today from Tuttle Fitness. Here's Marsha Murdoch, Gary Brown, and we have Kelly Bailey. All right, now that we know that, let's boogie. We'd like to thank all our guests for being here today. On tomorrow's show, we'll have Tim Evans and Mike Cook with the latest synchronized swimming tips. Join Ed and I tomorrow for the SAU Home Show.